One quarter left. And what do you know? It's dog eat dog. 23 to 16. Nick Payne got so upset with the defense, he walked out of the booth a couple of plays ago, and now our number one spotter has finally come back in. And you took his cushion, and now you've got everybody's. <laughs> Look at Tech <laughs> driving, sitting out on the 48 and a half as we start the fourth quarter, now going to the south, which is toward that new building. Third down and a full five when they let him go. 23 to 16. Dogs had a 14-point lead, and Tech took a kickoff and came all the way down. Lauren? Uh, Larry, down here on the sideline, Bill Lewis is really anxious, nervous, working. He really wants his defense to come up with a big third-down play. They've given up a lot of third-down plays tonight. Now, Georgia, he, as he yells to them, you need to make a big third-down play. And I know he has worked as hard as any coach can work preparing his team for this game and he is really sweating it he's ready for his defense to start making some big third down plays Larry we have a total yardage at the end of the third quarter Georgia with 260 yards Tech with 246 so the yardage is very very close yeah. at the end of three quarters of play and uh, amazing Georgia with 144 on the ground 116 through the air Jackson is now 9 out of 11 for 116 yards remember he was perfect at halftime but uh, He's had a little trouble here in the second half. Meanwhile, Darrell Gast has started to throw the ball more effectively. Very much so. The penalties in this game have been many, many. Changing momentums and doing things to people. Third and five. Check driving as we start the fourth quarter. They've driven it out from the shadow of the goal line, and they move. They all move. One of the running backs moved first, then the quarterback moved, and then he took the ball, and Tech's going to get a penalty here and be third and ten. This continues to, this, it has now happened in every quarter. Yeah. I, I don't know uh, what's going on unless somebody's trying to drive something. This time was just an ordinary uh, procedure thing, though. The running back, one of the backs back there, moved first. But before Georgia made a mistake to move with him, the quarterback moved. 23 16, we're still trying to run the play to start the fourth quarter. Been a funny night for penalties. Tech now back in their own 43, third and 10. George in a four-man front. Gas coming back to throw. Fires out to the left side, complete. And I think it might be a first down on the Georgia 45 and a half. Pass complete from number 12, General Gas, number 92, Chris Cottle. They hit Chris Cottle, and he got 10 or 10 and a half. It's on the 45. Little Greg Williams, the cornerback, was the guy that hit him. Right. Hit him immediately, and Tech is in Georgia territory with a drive. It's They are acting as if they're starting to take the line of scrimmage. Actually, they've had the ball more than Georgia in the ball game. They're on the 45 first down. I got a slot right. Dogs in the 5-2. Slot man in motion. Darrell Gass going to take it, run a toss sweep. And they go to Nate Kelsey. Kelsey driving and got over the 35. Let's see where they mark his knee down here. Rusty Beasley had to hit him. The blockers ahead had driven a couple of white shirts over the 35. He'd gone down to the 38, but he got seven. Nate Kelsey, a 235 pound, six foot one inch junior, alternating at fullback with Stephen Scott. Second and three. Tech driving steadily. And even blocking well on the line, too. Gas hollering at his men. Tech is a different-looking football team. They give it to the tail again. Kelsey coming out, trying to slant in. He carries attackers and drives for a first down to the 32-and-a-half, running with power, and the dogs can't stop him. Got about five or six more. Goldberg from behind. Will Jones, they're over. Tech driving, driving. They've driven it 60-some-odd yards now. They're trying to come down and tie it up. And, Larry, they've had the ball 27 minutes in this football game, and Georgia's had it 19, so that's a surprising figure as well. Tech driving, trailing 23 to 16. They've come all the way from the 5 to the Georgia 33. We just started, really, this fourth quarter. Davenport, one of the men in motion, coming wide to the right. And the quick handoff going to Malcolm King, the tail. 
who drove at the right tackle and only got about three on that play. Tacklers led by number 16, Jerry George's Webster. defense playing a lot more of time, spending a lot more time on the field tonight than I thought they would. Vince Guthrie outside linebacker, Terry Webster inside backer hit him. Well, it's amazing when you think that Georgia Tech has had the ball nine more minutes in this ball game than Georgia. Ball just touching the 30. The game was two and a half. T Tech is second down and seven and a half. Sitting outside the Georgia 30. Seven points behind. Slot man stops and starts in motion. Now he's going back again. And the quarterback calls time. Darrell Gass calls time, and his coaches didn't like that. Timeout, 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Georgia families grow and change, and State Farm is there. A lot can change in your life over the years. New job, new home, new car, new baby. And if things change, you'll be glad your State Farm agent is there. There to update your life and health insurance to make sure your new home and car are properly covered. The more things change, the more you can rely on your Georgia State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor. And that's the way it should be. State Farm is there. Weekends, days off, don't want to work no more. Gonna take my time now that it's mine. And I don't want to be where there's no Coca-Cola. This is the life. These are the real things. And you're the heart of it every day. In every way, Coca-Cola's a part of your life. Oh, and Coca-Cola's a part of your life. You can't beat the feeling. Coca-Cola Classic. AM 750 WSB. We told you earlier the attendance tonight's 45,103 and the tickets have not been distributed evenly because when they were doing the Georgia on one side and the Bulldog on the other, there were a lot of Bulldogs coming out of the tech section to answer the Georgia. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. The most talked about team in Atlanta Morning Radio. Bobby Harper and Kathy Fishman. Weekday mornings 5 till 9 here on AM 750 WSB Atlanta. Tech up to the line of scrimmage. They're on the dogs. 30. And Gas, the quarterback, drops back the throw. Throws it out on the left flat behind the line. Complete to King. King slipped just a little and they hit him on the 28. The he threw it to King in the left flat. One of our big linemen jumped up there in front of him, tried to bother him. Will Jones, your over, got him on the 27 where they spotted. He got three. Tech's going to be third down and about four on the Georgia 27. And keep in mind, they're only trailing by seven points, 23 to 16. Famous old grudge rivalry, and it has really turned into a war. Tech flip-flops the tight end. They got a slot on the right. Tight end straightened up and hollered to the quarterback. Now they run a slot man in motion. And their whole left side of their line jumped off. I don't know what's doing that. Tech's doing it now. We've done it all night. Uh, another uh, factor that uh, we might mention is when Tech took that last time out, which infuriated the uh, Georgia Tech sideline. That was their second timeout of this half. So they're down to one timeout. And now another penalty against Tech, and that doesn't uh, sit too well either. With no, the their tight end and their left tackle jumped off. The ball went back out to the 31 and a half exactly. It's third and nine now. 11.41 clock running. Georgia hanging grimly, and I mean grimly, onto a seven-point lead. Dogs have got six men on the line. Now we pull the corner back. And Gas, the quarterback, drops back to pass. Looking. They chase him. He got... I saw the flag fly as he threw it out of bounds down on the far left side. Yes, it was an obvious clip. Somebody blocked the Georgia man on the back, high behind the back, and hit him about 10 feet. I think it was uh, Larry Brown who was trying to make the tackle, who was hit from behind and driven out of there. And uh, he wasn't too happy because Georgia, for the first time tonight, was about to get their hands on gas. Giles came up awfully slow on that play. The big Please lineman also. Let's check the penalty here. Georgia will take it, no doubt. You could see the Tech uh, guy hit the big lineman from the back real hard. Up above the waist, however, two flags flew. And now we got a discussion. Here comes a penalty on Tech. They had been down there on the 27, third and four, and now they've broken their own back with penalties out to the 47. Lauren? 
Larry, uh, the coaches, the Georgia coaches were trying to signal to John Bradley on the field to find out if it were a 15-yard penalty because they had not seen the referee give the call. So as soon as they found out it was a 15-yard penalty, they decided to take the penalty. We changed two defensive linemen. We go into a three-man front. Tech third down, long yardage. Gas back to throw, looking. Throws over here to the right, incomplete. A little high for Nate Kelsey, who though his hands touched it on the 40, and he was open over on the right side. Man was wide open as Gas missed him, threw it high. He's 9 out of 18 throwing the football, and that big penalty took Tech out of field goal range. Fourth and 24 in a kicking situation as Sean McDevitt comes in. Tech drove 68 yards, got penalized twice, and came back. And now they got the punt. They drove it from their own five. Dogs defense is still on the field. Mike Bowen is a single safety for Georgia. And Tech punts trying to get that high, dangerous kick. Bowen dropped the ball, and then he dives on it around the 15 or 16. You remember losing the Clemson game when a guy Number fumbled a punt on the seven? Time out here. 60-second network break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Last night I saw this lady, she looked like a definite maybe. So I said, Miss, how do you do? You really make it work. This bud's for you. That bud sure started something. She said, I noticed you too. You really make it work. Anheuser Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. This bud's for you. When people love what they do, they show it with an extra smile, a helping hand, a willingness to go out of their way to make you feel truly welcome. At Delta, that's the way we feel about what we do. It's earned us a record of satisfied passengers unequaled by any other major U.S. airline. We love to fly, and that's a feeling we'd like to share with you. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. AM 750 WSB. Time of possession is something that we normally don't talk that much about, but uh, Larry, in this football game, Tech has had the ball 30 minutes and Georgia 19, and that's exactly the opposite of what you would have expected yeah. coming into this ball game. Again, 30 minutes for Georgia Tech, 19 for Georgia. Time of possession. Here's a halftime basketball score from Lafayette, Louisiana. Southwest Louisiana 40, Georgia 33. As the dogs come up to the line, we're on our own 16, 84 yards away from it. And we run Nate Lewis a wide out in motion, and then we sweep to that side. The Tate and Tate comes out, no room to run, stepped out after four or five yards the in the vicinity of the 20. Paul Jurgerson, a linebacker, Mike McIntyre, the free safety, shoving him out. He stepped out on the 20, second and six. 23 to 16, the lead is only seven. Tech has controlled the ball and been blocking well on the line, too, here in the second half. Georgia up to the line, seven-point lead, second and six on the 20. We're in an eye. Lewis out flanking and now running right to left in motion. And they go to the tail, no room. They hit Tate and drive him back behind the line. The blocking disintegrated on our left side. He tried to bounce off and couldn't. Eric Thomas, a young linebacker from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, was the first guy that hit him. Tech has a man down. Tech's got a man down. The ball is in the vicinity of about the 18. We lost a couple of yards in the play, and Tech has a man that's still down. Timeout here, 32nd local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Football is full of statistics and numbers, but Mitchell Motors Oldsmobile has the numbers that could really save you money. Low numbers, like Mitchell's everyday sale prices. High numbers, like the biggest possible allowance for your trade-in. And when it comes to experience, Mitchell has the winning record as the oldest Oldsmobile dealer in the state of Georgia. The numbers add up. The winning team is at 5675 Beachtree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. The winning team is at Mitchell Motors. Mitchell Motors Oldsmobile. AM 750 WSB. 50 seconds left to go on the ball game, and Georgia in their own territory. They're back on their 18, and now they have a third and long situation facing them. 
as the tech man has helped off the field. A little hard to read his number since they got all their shirts tied up in little knots. Third down now at eight and a half after they stopped Tate. Tech fans roaring. They're in a five-man front, almost a six. So little James keeps it and comes outside, trying to turn the corner, fights his way up to the 26, not quite enough. He needed eight and a half. I think he got seven and a half. He kept it. He had the running back behind him. He could have pitched. Thomas, the linebacker, was there. Gerald Chamblin, the cornerback, had come up in there. And Willie Burks, the big tackle, number 79, had an arm on him. It's going to be fourth down and about. Well, it's a short yard. It's only a half yard, really. The officials are looking at it on the 26. Lauren? Larry Lindy missed it by about four inches. Now it's more like six inches, but he did miss it. Good run, though. He kept and came out to the short side, and Little Jackson tried to dive for it. Now, one of the changes in this ball game as compared to the Auburn game is that Jackson has only carried the ball twice tonight. So now we're going to have to punt. We punted once. Dukes did his job and put Tech in the hole, but Tech just promptly drove it better than 60 yards and got out of the hole. Well, there. And now Hester will have to kick and go for distance on fourth and inches. Well, they've got an opportunity here to get excellent field position. Joey Hester from Cairo. They show that they're going to bring everybody. Mike McIntyre, the free safety, is the only safety back there. And did we have movement? What do we have here? They're going to exchange uh, footballs. They're going to get a dry ball or a different ball for the kick. And now they can't find the ball they want. It's interesting that the Tech... I've never seen... Well, I don't know what's going on here tonight with the officials. The, uh, the Tech return man uh, is shading off the left, which is a little bit of a surprise. Now, here we yeah, go. They got a, they got a football in there. In the yeah, he's come way to his right side. Tech has the line loaded up pretty good. They don't rush them all. Joey Jester kicks. Hester's kick hits on the Tech 39 and takes a Georgia bounce. It's rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling over the 25 to the 22 or 3. And Larry, there is a situation where the Tech return man was lined up absolutely wrong. The ball got by him as Hester kicked it straight. He was lined up as if he thought Hester was going to hook the, the punt, which is he doesn't do. So that was just a miscalculation, and it really pays off for Georgia. Better than 50 yards because of a long roll. Timeout, 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Last night, I heard a baby palm puppy scratching on my window. And then I heard a baby palm purry. And then, and then... Right now, whenever you buy any sandwich, fries, or drink at participating Hardee's, you can get one of the new babies for only $2.49. There's five in all, a new one each week while supplies last. What happened? And then I woke up. <laughs> come to Hardy's. You might just make some dreams come true on Christmas morning. Think of the Super Bowl played out in the fabulous Georgia Dome. The NCAA Final Four. The Peach Bowl. When you reserve your club seats under the Georgia Dome, you get season tickets to all Falcon home games and priority to purchase tickets to all other public events under the Dome. Call the Georgia Dome at 2225-115 and reserve your club seats or make an appointment to see a model of the Georgia Dome. 2225-115. Covering Georgia's premier events. AM 750 WSB. Joey Hester is not an engineering student, but he, at least he knew that if the ball was kicked straight rather than at an angle, he had an opportunity, and he got the roll. And now they're all the way back on their 22. Tech should have had the ball near midfield. Yeah, the receiving man, he just said, had really edged to one side. He had edged to his own right, or Joey Hester's left, and had moved from one hash mark across the field toward the other one. And Hester kicked it straight as an arrow. Here's Tech on their own 22 now. They're 78 yards away from it. Last time they had it, they went 63, 65 yards. Tech first down. Davenport the wide out in motion to the wide side of the field. And they run that trap with Malcolm King driving, pushing all the way to the 29 with sheer power and leg drive. They drove the whole defensive line back, it looked like. Malcolm King, that short chunky tailback just driving straight ahead and he drove it seven yards 
Tech is taking over the line of scrimmage. I uh, guessed or estimated at that about eight, nine minutes ago, and it looks like right now the Tech offensive line is really blocking us on the line of scrimmage. Second down about three or three and a half. One of the wideouts in motion and then going back. Gas, the quarterback, going to run a toss sweep. The King, who tried to stop, and the defense got him on the 25 and drove him back. He tried to stop and cut and cut, and Big Giles came up, and then Brantley, the linebacker, also. Webster was in there. Well, King saw that we were breaking the play down on our right side of our line. He tried to stop, and they really got him. Took a loss in the play of four yards. Tech's third and seven. Now another third and long situation, and Tech has been on offense, it seems like, all night. Tech in an eye with two wideouts. Georgia in a 4-3. Tech third down on their own 25. They trail by seven points. They've kept the ball almost the whole quarter. Here comes Gas sprinting out to the right side and is throwing. Knocked down by Will Jones, the rover, back in the 40s. Mike Brown, rather. Mike Tech's quarterback is hurt. And one of the dogs really coming in to hit him just as he got rid of the ball. Boy, Georgia got a break there because he had two men wide open off to his left, and he didn't see him. He, tried, he threw to the wrong man. Mike Brown, the rover. The guy that batted it out by the Tech bench around the 45 and the Tech quarterback really took a hit just as he got rid of it. Somebody was coming in from his left corner, his left side. It was Brantley, the linebacker, and hit him just as he got it off. And with that tackle, Brantley has become the number four primary tackler in Georgia history. Surpasses Nate Taylor, who had 187. Brantley now has 188 tackles. So uh, he moves up on the list, but at the same time, Gas threw the ball, and they had that side of the field totally flooded. He just missed the open man. And we'll be back after this 30 second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Hey, you dog fans know I'm not Kuppenheimer, but I know a quality player when I see one, like Kuppenheimer quality. Take his 100% all wool suit for just $185. The same quality fabric, styling, and workmanship you'd expect to find in suits costing twice as much. While the dogs are driving, you drive by your nearest Kuppenheimer in Buckhead, Jonesboro, Loganville, Norcross, North DeKalb, Roswell, and Smyrna. AM 750 WSB. Now Georgia has an opportunity to get excellent field position with 8.43 on the clock, and... Now they're going to change return people. Lewis out and uh, Mike Bowen came yeah, back in. Yeah, Nate Lewis was our deep man. Gas, the quarterback, came off slowly, walking under his own power finally, but walking very slow. Yeah. John McDevitt in a kicking situation for Tech when they let us go. Tech is fourth and seven on the 25. They're now warming up uh, two quarterbacks on the Tech sideline, both Rampley and Strom. 8.43 to go. Dogs leading, again, I say grimly, 23 to 16. There's a lot of old grudge games normally played right at the end of the year in this country, and this is one of those really tough ones that is usually very hard to predict, irregardless of what has gone on, but that same thing is true, of course. Getting a nice rest here, aren't we? They just, I don't know. <laughs> this case was television decided to take X number of minutes and everybody had to stand and wait, and we'd already had a long wait with a man down. You catch a cold waiting for this game to start. Fourth down. Dogs have eight men on the line and may not rush all eight. Let's see. Sean McDevitt standing on his 11. We don't rush them all. He kicks kind of end over end, not real deep. Bowen took it. They hit him immediately on the 40 and just knocked him down. Just rolled him over Mike Bowen. Well, Don Wilson, the senior cornerback, a backup behind Sammy Lilly, hit him immediately, but he hung on the ball. It's Georgia's ball on their own 40. Well, that was a good kick, and it was good coverage, but Georgia still has good field position because at least they were lined up right. Now we'll see if they're able to move. We have not moved at all in this quarter. We've hardly had the ball at all. Hampton and Brian Cleveland are the running backs. We flop Sadowski from the right side to the left side. And Jackson gives it to the tail, and Hampton got a hole off the tackle, the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40, all the way to the Tech 36. 
We open the hole on the right, and Rodney Hampton just first about 24 yards. McIntyre and then Wilson, the free safety in the corner, had to pull him down. Hampton was through that hole on the right side, awfully fast. Opened up over there by Stevens and Mull. Dogs are the first down quickly to the Tech 36. Flip flop Sadowski over to the other side again, right to left. Tech comes up on a six man line. So we run the tail back in the middle. No room to pick him up and knock him down on the 33. He got maybe three yards. Couldn't block it in the middle. Hampton two and a half or three. I believe that Osgaard was not blocked. Big Burks, the uh, tackle, Stevens, the linebacker helping. They put it on the 33 and a half. He got two and a half. Well, a touchdown would be nice, but three would also be good for George at this point in the ball game. So they've got to be thinking about that. 23 to 16, dogs sitting on the tech 33 and a half. Second down, seven and a half. Osborne in motion, they sweep. Hampton juggled it and caught it. First to hold of the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10. Touchdown, Rodney Hampton. He bobbled the pitch, but kept possession of it and shot through the right tackle hole so fast and then kind of veered to the left. He ran by a man that should have had him that barely bumped him a little on the hip and just really blew down the field. So the youngster out of Houston, Texas, ran that very, very well and put the dogs back up on top by 13, 29 to 16. Casey to try the extra point. 7.22 to go. Casey sticks his left foot in there. Good. And it's 30 to 16. Timeout, 60-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Weekend. Wow. Days off. Don't want to work no more. Gonna take my time now that it's mine. And I don't want to be where there's no coke. You're gonna. This is the life. These are the real things. And you're the heart of it. Every day. Cola Classic. The race doesn't always go to the swift or the battle to the strong, but that's the way to bet. Georgia is the oldest state chartered university in America, and Mitchell Motors is Georgia's oldest Oldsmobile dealer. Mitchell Motors backs every sale with a half-century reputation for outstanding service, and Mitchell means savings with low sale prices and top dollar for your trade-in. It just makes sense. In football or automobiles, it pays to go with the winners. Mitchell Motors Oldsmobile, 5675 Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. Mitchell Motors, Oldsmobile. AM 750, WSB. Well, as Lauren predicted, Hampton was due to break loose, and he did. Two big runs. Casey kicks off for the dogs. Deep, Richard Hills on the six. To the 10, to the 15, to the 20, trying to veer out to the left. Being chased over there on that side. Morris Lewis got him. Flag down up on the 28, and Morris Lewis got him, the young freshman linebacker. Now check a penalty up there. Up ahead of the ball carrier in the middle of the field. Let's see. Got a clipping on Tech. Have you ever seen so many penalties? 30 to 16. Georgia leads by 14 with 7.14 to go. Yeah, the only thing, you know, we just haven't seen any interceptions by uh, Georgia, and that's one thing that Tech has been guilty of lately is critical turnovers. Lauren? Well, I was just going to say, before that uh, play uh, started there, before the kickoff, uh, somebody grabbed me and pulled me off balance as I was starting to talk. Coach Dooley didn't celebrate all the way ran down the field and after scored. He really didn't celebrate. He ran to the defense and said, let's play some defense. He certainly didn't feel like the game was over when Hampton scored. There's a lot of people here, obviously, much. Rick Strom is now the quarterback. First time tonight. Rex got a slot to the right side. Dogs in the five-man front. And they run that draw, and here comes Malcolm King up to the 15. Keeps going and twisting all the way out to the 24. Though so the penalty had shoved him all the way back to the nine. They ran Malcolm King on the trap. 
Vincent, the cornerback, and Brantley, the linebacker, had to get him close to the 24, and they got 15 yards immediately. King has now carried 18 times for 74 yards. Tate, by the way, has 90 yards for Georgia, and Hampton now has 94 yards. Check for the first down on the 24. They trail 30 to 16. Dogs are in a 4-3. Rick Strom, kind of a long count. Going to fake the trap, stop and throw down the middle, and incomplete. Receiver didn't get it. That was Malcolm King. It was maybe on the wrong side of him or a shade low. It was catchable, though. It looked like he turned too late. It'll be second down and 10. Tech sitting just shy of their own 24. They're 14 down with 644 to go. It has been a war all night. There were 45,103 here. A few have left. Dogs in that four-man front. Targets and Guthrie are the outside people. Here comes Strom. Looking, looking, throws to his right side, complete, and they hit him right away and knock him down, but he might have a first down. They're over hit him. Malcolm King, the running back. Mike Brown hit him right away. Webster was a second man. Malcolm King got a 10-yarder, 10 and a half, up to the 34 and a first down. Tech trying to come down the field. 14-point game. They don't look like a club that hasn't beaten a Division I team all year. Dogs of the 14-point lead in the fourth quarter. Strom drops back, looking, throws to the right, too high, incomplete. Jennifer Steve Davenport, he overthrew him, and our quarterback Ben Smith hit him a moment later, second down. Davenport has got sure hands, and uh, while he doesn't have the greatest speed in the world, he has a knack for getting open, but that ball was overthrown. Actually, Tech's leading receiver is Greg Lester. He's been shut out tonight. They've only thrown to him, I think, about once or twice. 6.08 is the clock where it stopped with the incompletion second down. Rick Strom and a quarterback. Darrell Gast was shaken up. Strom going to run the trap again. Jumping in there, Richard Hills, and can't do it at left tackle. Dogs won't let him move. Big Paul Giles, a nose guard. Kid from Monroe just jammed that up in there. It's going to be... Uh, the official holding the yard mark over there just tripped and fell hard on something. It's still third down and about 10. They may have gained a foot on that last play. Third down, nine and a half. The ball's across the 34. Clock running five and a half minutes. Tech with a pro set again. Strom taking a long count. One of the wide outs in motion, and he's stepping back. He fakes the trap again, throws out in the left flat, and somebody comes up, bounces off the receiver, then another man hits him. Mike Brown hit him. First man, Richard Hills, the running back, and they lost yardage on the pass play, four or five yards. The so Webster and Brantley, the linebackers, came up after they're over. Mike Brown bounced off him. Five-yard loss on the completion. Tech is fourth and five, and they have to kick again. 30 to 16. John McDevitt to punt. Dogs have eight men on the line. McDevitt kicks beautiful. High, good, long, high spiral. And Bowen runs away from it. It bounces sideways on the 32, and it's still rolling down around the 30 or 31. He called a fair catch and then uh, ran off. He must have, it looked like he must have lost it at the last second. He could have lost it in the lights. Dogs will take over right outside their own 30, leading by 14 with 4.31 to go, and many fans have started to file out. Georgia trying to win their eight. Tech trying to win their third. And we have changed quarterbacks. Wayne Johnson is in. Tech at the last second runs Sendobri, the linebacker, back in, number 89. Randy Jackson's the full. Lars Tate is the tail. We flip-flops the tight ends. 4.31 to go. Tech's in a 4-4. Toss sweep to Tate, trying to get him out to the right. He jumped a man and went down on the 33. Only got a couple of yards, two and a half maybe. Paul Jerkerson, the outside linebacker over there, was not blocked. Good. We got another flag down on that field. They're pointing at Georgia. 
I don't know what the final yardage on penalties will be, but what I would like to know is how many have been called and discussed. Now they got a face mask on Georgia Tech. Tech has been pointing at Georgia. Face mask penalty on Tech all the way out to the 48. They act like they've wanted to fight all night long. 30 to 16. 421. So a sweep that had only gained a couple of yards at a penalty tacked on the end of it. Fans are filing out of old Grant Field. Dogs with a two touchdown lead. It's getting a little late. Tech's in a 4-4. Now it's a 5. They shift and switch as our tight end does. So we go to the tailback. Tate tried to climb up at right guard, and they just jammed him up for a yard and a half and no more. Dogs trying to run it on the ground now. I relieve the nose guard. Sean Smith, the tackle. Stevens, the linebacker. Uh, you can be sure they'll keep it on the ground and, of course, uh, throw in the fact that Tech's only got one timeout left, so they're, they're in sort of a helpless situation as far as the clock is concerned. If Georgia can just pick up one more first down, this one's pretty well salted away. Got only a yard, ball on the 49 and a half, second and nine. We're in an eye again. Wayne Johnson, the quarterback, he waits till the tight end Warner flops right to left. And he hands it the last second to Tate, who burst the hole at right tackle and shot over the 45 to the 44. Tate got about seven on the play. Keith Holmes, the safety, and Jurgis in the linebacker. And that, uh, that should give Lars Tate 100 yards rushing tonight. He shot on the play seven to the 43 and a half. It's third down a yard and a half. Clock running. And the scoreboard at the moment, everything in favor of the dogs, 30 to 16. And the clock is now down at 2.52 and moving. Dogs need a yard and a half, and they run Nate Lewis in motion right to left. Go a toss sweep to Tate, no blocking, and they're going to eat him up behind the line two or three yards, back out on the 46. Secondary came up, Holmes got him, Sean Smith got him. Sam Lilly, the corner, had come up also. Loss in the play of about two. Back out to almost a 46. Lost three on the play. Fourth down. Well, David Duke's going to try a short kick. Now he doesn't have 100 yards on the night. <laughs> 215. Dukes in a kicking situation. He's standing back on his own 40. He wants to get off a high kick. Oh, and they snapped it way over his head. Rolling, rolling down over the 20. He may David kick it. David Duke picks it up on the 16, and he kicks it left-footed. It's coming up, and the Tech man catches it on his 39, and then the dogs knock him down. Dukes went back 25 yards, picked it up, had enough room and time, and he got a kick off. Now, the punt may only have traveled four or five yards. Six. Six yards. Six yards. <laughs> but he did kick it. Instead of running and getting thrown for a deep loss way back there, David Dukes had presence of mind to pick it up and kick the ball. And now Tech, though they may have good field position, they could have been way down there in scoring position. Darrell Gast is coming back in at quarterback. Larry, that is the longest six-yard punt in Georgia history. <laughs> yeah, from where he was standing, it went 40-some-odd yards. Tech on her own 39. Gas coming back. Fires over to the left. Dropped incomplete by Greg Lester. Tardits had a pretty good rush coming at Gas. Second down. It's only a minute and 47 to go. Georgia leading 30 to 16. Been a long game with many penalties and fraught with danger and loaded with discussions. Second and 10. Tech on the 39. Two touchdown lead. Dogs in a four-man front. They fake the trap. Gas is running wide out there to the left. Gas throwing on the run complete, and they hit him viciously on the 43. Mike Brown or over really cracked Richard Hills. Rover is one of the position that we completely lose by graduation off this team. Brown and Jones will both be leaving. The pass play only picked up about four yards to the 43. Back to throw, gassed. Down the middle, too high incomplete off the receiver's hands. 
Richard, Chris Cottle, a big 6-5 tight end, jumped it both hands down around our 40, incomplete fourth down. Minute and 14, it's 30 to 16. Georgia with a 14-point lead, but don't think it hasn't been stubborn. Boy, have they kept our defense on the field in the second half. Dogs apparently about to win their eighth game of the regular season. Four-man rush, fourth down. Gas got hit as he throws, dropped by his receiver. Big Cottle dropped it on our 44, running left to right. And that ball was in his hands. Yes, right in his hands. And they hit Gas just a half second later. So the dogs will take it over with only 68 seconds. Some Georgia Tech fans may feel that that last play was a symbol of their whole season. 30 to 16. Lauren, what do you got? Well, Larry, I think Coach Dilley will probably say on the locker room show that uh, Georgia's never going to make it easy. You know, uh, Georgia has played very well in so many respects, but defensively, they just had so many breakdowns. A lot of them on third down. Tech has really played a very gritty, very fired up football game. You'll have to give them credit for really doing a great job tonight. Dogs ball on the Tech 44, and we're just going to eat up the clock and let Johnson just stop there and take a loss about a yard behind the line and drop on it. And we walk back into a lazy huddle, and the clock is ticking away. This will be the eighth win of the year. This is what we did last year, and we tried to get number nine and lost it on the last play of the game in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Now well, they're taking out the uh, a lot of the seniors now, and the yeah, they are. They're letting them come off of the sideline, and we put in some number two linemen. Dick Payne's trying to match them and move them. Second and 11 with some backs behind for protection. Wayne Johnson again just kneels down and takes it. The officials jump in between that line of scrimmage to keep them from fighting as they shove at each other. I see Henderson and Wayne Wright and Lamont Tellis in there. Shelly Anderson. Now George Tech, uh, Mervos is the center. Tech's going to call a timeout, I think. 19 seconds to go. Tech calls time. It's third and 11. Dogs back in the 45 and just letting the clock run technically. Jose McCrary coming in. He ran a lot of tailback in the junior varsity game the other day. Timeout, 30-second local break on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Football is full of statistics and numbers, but Mitchell Motors Oldsmobile has the numbers that could really save you money. Low numbers, like Mitchell's everyday sale prices. High numbers, like the biggest possible allowance for your trade-in. And when it comes to experience, Mitchell has the winning record as the oldest Oldsmobile dealer in the state of Georgia. The numbers add up. The winning team is at 5675 Beach Tree Industrial Boulevard, just inside the perimeter. The winning team is at Mitchell Motors. Mitchell Motors Oldsmobile. Mobile. 19 seconds. Third and 11 on the 45 and a two touchdown lead. Lauren? Well, there's still stuff coming out of the stands. Uh, Tech ever needs a quarterback. There's a guy up uh, stairs that's throwing ice pretty good. He's been at it all night, so they ought to go check him out. He might make the team. Dogs with a lot of number two people in there. I don't know about the tight ends. I don't know if Chris Broom is in there or not. Probably is. He played most of the day the other day and finally had to wind up even punting the ball and didn't punt bad, by the way. Dogs have a 14-point lead. Uh, I guess there's always hope, but Georgia Tech called a timeout, and now Georgia will snap the ball, and that'll be it, and uh, the game will be over. But uh... Eight and three in a matter of inches and a couple of yards in two different places. Once our stadium and once in Clemson. They were that close to a great year. Third and 11, line of scrimmage. Johnson behind Mervos and went back and took a two or three yard loss. And the ball game is going to wind it down right there. And the seconds tick out, but it was tough and a fight tonight. How much the penalties had to do with changing momentums or stopping drives or keeping drives going, I don't know. Georgia has been a winner, 30 to 16. Tech winds up their year two and nine. The dogs are eight and three and headed for the Liberty Bowl against the University of Arkansas. When we got out in front, 23 to nine, 
you thought and so did I that we were going to wreck it up pretty good, but we did not. Gast had a very, very good night at quarterback for Tech. Phil will be back after a two-minute network break now.